G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, we finally got a nice cool morning in the shed. And, uh, the 40 C plus days lately have been cruel, you know. <laughs> they really, they really grind you down in South Australia. Man, we get it hot here, and it's a dry heat, you know. It, uh, although yeah, it can be humid. Either way, it really does tie you up. Working outside is a bit much. So all you people who are hunkered down in the Northern Hemisphere with the cold and the ice and the snow, I don't know which is worse. But, uh, I don't like the snow either. But uh, Anyway, looking at the little lathe, um, basically it's just a wrap up. And you can see that I've put some razor blocks on the, hardwood razor blocks on the base. And this is basically finished now. I've aerodited the handles in the up position so they can't rattle and uh, that worked out good. The whole thing's quite weighty, you know, it's, it's a, bit of, a bit of heft in it. Got the little rubber feet on the bottom of this now. Now the reason I did this was bring it up to a better height, a working height. It's not too bad now. And also because uh, Kild Sorensen, one of the viewers, actually hit the nail on the head when he said he thought the wooden base might be acting as a, a soundboard. And, and it did, it does. And when the base is down close to the bench top, it really resonates. But once you lift it up a little bit, it makes a huge difference. Quiets it down quite a, a lot, in fact to a level where it's basically solved the problem. So I'll turn it on, you can hear it. That's not too bad really. That's pretty reasonable, I think, you know. So yeah, um, I'll lift it up while it's running, you can hear the difference now. Not too bad, so it's really solved the problem. Also the bearings on this, I think I've adjusted up pretty much spot on because I did the old the old flick test. Uh, <laughs> it's a basic test that I was shown years ago on how to set up preload on bearings on lathes and the old the rule is take the drive belt off, you disconnect any change gears if you got them, and you give the chuck a flick with your hand as hard as you can. And if the bearings are adjusted correctly for you know the given size lathe and the mass of the spindle and everything, the chuck will rotate between one and a quarter and one and a half times. Now, okay, that sounds pretty. It's a pretty rudimentary test, but it actually does seem to hold true. You know, I played around with it a bit, and yeah, once you get the bearings adjusted correctly, one and a quarter, one and a half turns of a chuck from a flick is generally a good indicator. If it spins more than that, well, you know, it's too loose, and if it spins less, it's too tight. So it's probably a good good way to show you the the uh, the fact that it might be too tight. Also, I ran this for an hour, and the bearings just got warm, so that's just nice. That's how it should be, just warm, not hot. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, it's good. So job done. Um, now it's just been a matter of use it for a project or two. I also did a test of the speed range on this thing, and it's odd the way the, uh, the quoted speed range goes, because it's not accurate. The high speed range is accurate, that seems pretty right, you know, I tested that, but the low speed range is totally weird. Uh, I'll show you. I mean, it's supposed to go 100 to 1000 RPM on the low range, and it's supposed to go 400 to 4000 on the high range. Well, that's pretty right. It will go lower than 400. But that's probably the you know the safe speed you know you don't want to labour the motor, but I'll show you that on the low speed range how weird this this really is. I'll I'll do a uh, a reading on it with my laser, my little laser tachometer. I'll use an end mill that I usually 
you use for these jobs. Let's put it in nearly. Come on, baby, open up. Right. Now, okay, I've got an end mill in there. It's got some reflective tape on it. This is the digital tachometer that I use. These are good. They're cheap, but they're accurate as hell, and they're really good. And they're safe to use because you're not getting your hands near any rotating parts or car engine fans or anything like that. They're, they're good. You know, they work from about three, well, two foot, a foot, sort of, you know, well away, 18 inches, two foot around there. They work from there down to right up close, depending on um, how big your reflector is, of course, and how much light there is around and whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll just do the low speed range so you can just see how it goes. Oh, we're good to go. You can use chalk on the, um, on the object you're measuring, white chalk, rather than waste your reflector tape. If it's a matte black surface, you know, it'll work quite well on chalk, but if it's a shiny surface like this metal, it's shiny versus shiny, so you really need the proper shiny stuff. So yeah, I'll just do the low speed range. You can see how weird the, <laughs> the quoted measurement is. So uh, we'll fire it up. I hope it comes up all right. All right. Fifty seven. So fifty seven up to fourteen hundred and fifty. But when I, that's it within the speed range, but the quota range is up to a, a thousand, so it's already well above the the variable speed range because you see these operate within a variable speed range and then you've got a, another setting where you bypass the speed controller completely and it just gets full voltage and that is faster again so when I switch it you'll see the difference uh, where are we? Fourteen forty seven. Twenty one hundred. So basically it's spinning twice as fast as the uh, the little plate on the front says. I mean basically you're turning from zero speed up to two thousand RPM on the low speed pulley. Uh, that's totally adequate for everything you ever want to do. In fact, you know, you could gear this thing down with an even bigger pulley, give it even more, give it more grunt, and it would still be within, the, say, a thousand RPM speed range, uh, or a thousand to two thousand, maybe. Uh, you know, depending on how bigger, much bigger you make the pulley. So what I'm saying is, I don't see where you'd ever use the high speed pulley because the speed range is insane. You know. 4,000 RPM, uh, and it's just going to be less torque than using the low-speed setting. So, I mean, when I got this, it was set up on the low-speed setting, and that's basically the only setting you really need, you know. Uh, these are a low-drag, uh, high-torque belt, so I think the belt, being very flexible, much more flexible than the original sort, probably gives it a few more RPM could be quite a few more. I mean, we're talking, uh, well, you know, 100% more. Yeah, that's a weird, weird, weird setup. Well, I can't understand that. But anyway, that's it. Uh, not a lot happening. I've been working on the house, trying to work on the house, but it's been so hot. And I haven't got much in the way of metalwork projects going. Oh, I've got one on the agenda, but it's, you know, it's a matter of getting a decent cool spell otherwise it just it just stuffs you right up you know i'm getting too old for the heat it just uh yeah it's too much okay well uh that's it for now just a bit of uh yeah a bit of an update just give you a bit of eye candy to look at you can see how it's all worked out i mean i paid 100 bucks for this baby and i think it's cost me 
300 all up with new chuck and new belts and you know what have you. It's still a pretty cheap lathe and it's now in perfect condition. All right, that's it. Uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>